Hey y'all, coach in the fight. Hey guy, Chris has stacks with him. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. I know Chris is busy, but I did want to share something with you, Chris, that we were talking about a few months ago. Remember the the little video we watched that had the clip in about 1984? Well, that's the year if you start with the crossing of the River Jordan mm -hmm. and then go back 40 years to when they had the exodus. Yeah. That's equivalent to starting in 2024 and going back 40 years, you get 1984. Hmm. That's what he was. He was trying to figure out the exodus. Right, right. But anyway, in this video, we're going to also be talking about 2024. Following up the video that I did earlier on 2024, on, that we did earlier on the Shekinah Glory and the 490 years time clips. You know what I'm talking about, Stacey? I the, do. And we're going to use the clock to help us? Yep. How about we use this one? Okay. This is the January 22nd revision. Nope. Looks like we're going to have to use Red 15.2, which we plan to published on or about February 26th. All right. You see, we had to update it here. And it's a little bit different from the other one. So we'll just look at this one because it shows 1975, 2023, 2024 at the start position. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean by start position? Um, I believe you're talking about um, the Shekinah Glory. Well, when you're looking at the celestial clock calendar, the over here is where you would be seeing a new moon. Mm -hmm. So the over here is the start position. Everything starts over here at this part. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes around where you have the first month, second month, third month, uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth month, seven, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit confusing when you look at our clock because we think it's supposed to start up here. But that twelve can also represent December, mm -hmm. which will be the head of the solar year. Mm -hmm. and But our year starts in the spring, so it's over here. Right. And everything else kind of does too. So we had to shift everything around so that everything starts in its proper time. Like for instance, in 1975 was the beginning of the next 490 year time in history. You know what I mean by that? Um, yeah, the um, the next period. Yeah. But I remember in that video, it's talked about in 75, which kind of glowing, right? Is that right? And, and you might have heard that, yeah. And that's what we want to talk about. And I also said that it was time to enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted to talk about, clear that up, okay. what that was all about. I, I don't know. You know, did I make a mistake here and need to make some corrections or what? And I'm hoping that you asking, you know, questions like you're doing will bring some of that out, you know, because if you don't understand, somebody else may not understand. Okay. All right. So the first question you asked would it be like the Shekinah Glory in 1975. Mm -hmm. So we can use this chart in order to understand where we get 1975. First, we must start there at the year 3907. That is the year that Cain was born. Okay. The first human with a belly button. Mm -hmm. We get that from Genesis chapter 6. Understanding that that was the beginning of the first jubilee. All right. The first jubilee year would have actually been 50 years later. Right? You, you right. get that part? Mm-hmm. Now, after Cain was born and you go 490 years, you end up in Jared's time with the fallen angels. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. 490 years later, Enoch was translated. And then 490 years after that, you have Noah's flood. Right. Well, if you keep going all around, just counting 490 years, you end up in the year 1975. Okay. So that would have been the year of the new beginnings that would have been the year and the time when humanity would have been ready to go into the kingdom of heaven okay 
Does that make sense? How how they would be ready, but yet they wouldn't actually go yet? Um, ready, but not actually moving into it. Um, like sort of like prepared to go. Think about the Exodus and how they had the crossing of the River Jordan mm -hmm. with Joshua. Mm -hmm. Well, that was actually in the year 1457 okay. BC. Mm -hmm. Um, so it fell right on a jubilee period, right on right on the year almost. Mm -hmm. uh, in the year, exactly, I should say. I shouldn't say almost. It, they crossed the River Jordan during the jubilee year. Okay. Well, that would be equivalent to 1975. But when you look back at this living parable, it was 40 years earlier that they had the exodus. And... While I was preparing this video, I went in to look at what happened 40 years before 2024. Mm -hmm. You end up in 1984. So what significantly happened in 84? Nothing. It seems because when you look for 1984, all you find is information about a movie. Hmm. Yeah. And that's what I was talking to Christian about earlier. We watched a little episode. I think I showed it to you where... You had this individual that was searching for our father, I mentioned. One of the things he was looking for was 1984. Mm -hmm. And he found this stuff that you find here. But let's see what happens in the events of 84. Civil unrest movement demands direct presidential elections in Brazil. And the Indian prime minister... Uh, Gandhi. Gandhi is assassinated by two of her security guards. NASA and the FFA internationally crashed a remote control Boeing aircraft, and it was the beginning of the anti skin riots in India. Sikh. Anti Sikh riots. Anti Sikh. Ooh, that's a. Um very humble religious group over there. So you had those guys and you had the assassination of Gandhi in 1984. But other than the Olympics, that's all that was going on. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anything, I would say, big happened. Well, so in 1984, it is a, a dystopian novel where society is completely controlled by the ruling government party and the main character is a censor. So you're all referencing the movie. And we I've noticed the way they, they do things. Like, for instance, if you try to look up the word Nissan, you get a car. Right. Yeah. So... so Anyway, my point is, is that they crossed the River Jordan in the Jubilee year, mm -hmm. but the exodus was 40 years earlier. Well, that would be similar to what we have going on here, where the exodus would have been closer to 1984, after 1975, mm -hmm. and given us time to prepare as we go into the garden. Right, in 2024. In 2024. Now, for a scriptural reference, we can come to Revelation chapter 8. All right. Where it's talking about the lamb opening the seventh seal. Mm -hmm. Notice there that he talks about a half hour of silence. Right. Or a half hour where nothing would happen. Yeah, you've often mentioned this half hour of silence in um, many of the videos. Yeah, and because we found out in the Apocalypse of Abraham that a hour in this time was 100 years, mm -hmm. and which makes sense because a half hour is about 50 years or is 50, would be 50 years or about one Jubilee cycle. Mm -hmm. So this is why we haven't entered the kingdom of heaven yet. This is kind of what we're waiting for is what we saw back in Revelation chapter 7, when the sealing process began. Okay. You know what sealing we're talking about as far as the so-called Great Awakening, where people are rising to their higher self. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, Some people call it the rapture. So the sealing process started somewhere between 1975 and 
what I believe to be about 1984. And it's still going on now? Well, absolutely. If we go look at a book called The Keys of Enoch, which was written in about 1973, in Key 315, it starts to talk about how we have to, well, it says chakra levels here. And I know a lot of us don't know it. I don't know what a chakra level is. But what we're talking about is, I don't want to use the word good, but how good of a person we are. Mm -hmm. Are we kind? That would be one chakra level. Are we loving? That would be another. Are we charitable? That would be another. Do we have faith? That would be another chakra level. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, just read verse 42. I was told by Metatron that each man would recognize the existence of this new program of light according to his own unique time element, which is connected with the chakra levels filtering the energies of space-time events. Now, that's a lot going on in that verse. You see, he's actually talking about the Great Awakening there, where he says, this new program of light, mm -hmm. this is what we're rising to. This is what Daniel was talking about. This is what everybody was talking about in the scripture, where he said, this day will come when humanity will change in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this book talks about that twinkling here a little bit, but go ahead and read 43. For those who are operating already on the seventh chakra level of enlightenment, the recognition that we are entering a new program of consciousness will take place in 1976. For those operating on the sixth chakra level, it will take place in the 1980s. For those on the fifth and fourth chakra level, this realization will come before the year 2004, Arizona, according to the reckoning of the lower heavens which will mark the beginning of the next great cycle. In other words, you had to be so good to get to go over early. And if you wasn't a good a person, if you had issues, then some of those issues would hold us back and or may have to be completed before we, I don't know how it works on, our, on that level. But it's telling us that it started there in 1976, as, as far as, you know, those that were on the seventh level. Mm -hmm. And then it says, a lot of other ones would go in, in the 80s, and I believe it was 1984. So that holds true to um, when it's talked about the good die young. Well, no, it's not. Well, <laughs> um, nobody's talking about dying physically. They're actually talking about dying spiritually, yeah, and a new person being born, our real self being born with us, within us. That's the great awakening. So those who are on level 10... Um, this enlightenment would have came around what is saying 1976. Well, uh, seven, the seven chakra level. Yeah, once the seven chakra level was open. I... So, like, I guess it's saying the higher the level, the earlier that it came for you. Yeah, right. That makes sense. So, well, you, okay, you got the perfect individual go first, the one who has all his chips in place, get to go through the gate first, and then the one who's missing, like charity, has to wait the next time. Mm -hmm. And then now we're taking people who ain't charitable. Everybody who's not charitable can get in this boat, but I got other problem. Not you. You got to wait till next time. Mm -hmm. And so I believe, looking at the celestial clock calendar, this opportunity for transition has occurred during the sabbatical years. 1981, 1988, 1995, which is when I first came to know the Lord, 2002, 2009, 2016, when I came to know the law, and then 2023. I think in each one of these sabbatical years, we've gotten the opportunity to be raptured, or should I say, awakened. Mm -hmm. So every, um, I guess, is it 50 years? It's like a new, um, fresh new, um, I don't know what you would call it, fresh new amount of rain down enlightenment comes upon the people. Well, that's every 490 years hmm. when the Shekinah glory comes down. Mm-hmm. Then you get a fresh uh, burst in, in like like you're looking here. We modify this just a little bit 
Um, but each time the Shekinah glory came down, first you had the fallen angels, and then Enoch was translated right where right the time when Noah was born. Then you had the flood, Abrahamic covenant, the crossing of the river Jordan, and then you have the uh, tribes being divided. So here you have like the downfall where the tribes were divided. Um, they built the second temple. You have the Messiah showing up, but then you have the Dome of the Rock. Something went on with the Catholic Church back there. And then you have the calendar that came into effect to uh, disrupt the church. And so each each one of these times, something major is going on in humanity. And that's why the Shekinah glory comes down to kind of save us from the calendar effect, to kind of uh, save us from the Dome of the Rock, help you know, lead us out of Jerusalem during that time, Shekinah glory to let them out, mm -hmm. to really help them build the temple, all kinds of stuff. But it's really during that time now, the Jubilee year probably would have a little bit of that too. I remember, you know, just from, you know, growing up uh, middle ways as a Pentecostal. And I remember how um, reading some of the history of the Pentecostal church, how it they talked about how in 1970, um, a lot of um, stuff happened. They called it the coming down of the Shekinah glory. Um, obviously, you know, from learning from you that that, ne that wasn't necessarily what it was. Um, but I think something, I know they talked about how everybody was filled with all this stuff and everybody was just, hmm. you know, yeah. but it occurred in the 70s uh, sometime. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's where they got the yeah. main Pentecostal. Well, if we explore the idea, then yeah, that's what you would have. And um, it can make sense to me that the Jubilee year being a new beginning is also the first year, right? So it's like the new moon, mm -hmm. where it's, also, it's the 30th day and it's also the first day. Well, that would be a new beginning and maybe that's what they were experiencing back then and even in 1975, the new beginning for the Jubilee year. Now, the thing about it, what would have happened is it would have been a reset in humanity. Mm -hmm. If, you know, of course, it wouldn't have been isolated to just the Pentecostals. Would have been something that everybody would have had the opportunity to experience. And my guess, my fictional book, I'm going to write that it was the Pentecostals that lasted the longest before they actually tripped up and sinned mm -hmm. and got cast back down to our dimension, mm -hmm. so to speak. For those who are um, not familiar with that, you know, this, the Great Awakening is a fifth dimensional thing. You become a spiritually minded person. And so, but once we sin, once we break the laws um, and separate ourselves from our father, it's like getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden all over again. And so it would have had to fall off. And so now, all these many years later, nobody would even remember, you know, how it happened, why it happened. They all they remember is that it happened. Right. Yeah. But I believe it's about to happen again here in 2024. We we'll have another awakening similar to that. But the thing about this time is we have also the opportunity for the marriage Mm-hmm. Well, that's something that we are expecting here in 2024, because what that will do is, you know, not only this great awakening, but that's going to be the doorway into the kingdom of heaven when you go through Passover in, um, in, in 2024. Our tabernacles will be extremely important, too. But I do not want to forget Rosh Hashanah, which is the first that could and maybe will be the most important day out of this whole thing. Right. Because that's when that's when the stars align. You ever heard him say, "Shoot for the moon," and even if you miss, you end up amongst the stars. Right. Well, that only happens on certain times of the year. If you were to look at the full, look toward the full moon, right behind the full moon would be Kemal, which some people call Pleiades. Mm -hmm. So that would put it somewhere in this part of the sky, as far as where we're looking from our perspective. Well, in the and that's in the fall. Well, in the spring, in order to see it, it's the full moon that we'll be looking at mm -hmm. that you'll have to look at in order to see Pleiades right. or Kim, Kimmel, which is the Hebrew name for it. And so that's one of the two times in a year that you can shoot for the moon and find yourself amongst the stars. Right. 
All right, with that, guys, we don't want to take up any more of your time. We're going to go ahead and close this video out. I hope you got something out of it. Stacey, you get anything out of it? I did. What did yeah. you get out of it? Well, I learned about um, having a better understanding of um, the 50-year cycle, um, more understanding of, about the Shekinah glory that only occurs um, every 400 plus years. Or 90. Yeah. All right, guys, if you got anything out of it, like I said, hit the like button. Um, if you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. Do they have a dislike button anymore? They just don't show us the numbers. Oh. It's even hard for us to see them. They don't even want us to know who don't like it. Hmm. Yeah, we see percentages and stuff. But it's all right. It helps out either way. So thank you for all you do, and see you in the comment section. See you later.